It's how we do it. class and welcome to the lecture for 7-7. We are on the last kind of function that we will be studying here in chapter 7. This is called a logistic function. This is where you have exponential growth, but it doesn't go on forever. There's a maximum. And I really love this section. You can tell I was sort of hinting at it with the population of the world graph that I did back in 7-2 that I think nowhere in real life do you have unrestrained uh, exponential growth that can just go on for forever. I mean, maybe the size of the universe, but even there, they don't think that's uh, the only likely scenario. So it's, it's definitely something that we would need to study if we were going to model things in real life. That yes, initially there's an explosion of population of whatever it is, bacteria or something, but eventually they fill up the whole petri dish and there's nowhere left for them to go and they run out of food and there's a maximum population that happens. So this is pretty pretty useful to have when talking about real life data it's it's very accurate i think to modeling god's universe so we can see that the sort of normal stuff that we study here of a uh, exponential function like 2 to the x that that's something that just goes on forever and ever and ever and never uh, stops the much more logical sort of thing the much more reasonable sort of thing is to say well yeah okay there's a sort of 2 to the x a time where it goes up and up and up really fast, but there's also a maximum. There's also a, a ceiling, a, a, a carrying capacity, it's called in technical terms, for how big the function can get. And this then, if you see here on the right, is the equation that will uh, describe that for you. Now, this one is pretty straightforward, easy to understand. There's two to the x being divided by nearly the same thing but not what quite one more in the denominator than in the numerator. And that will make it level off at one as you go to the right. And if you were interested in negative time for some reason, you would go off to the left and have an asymptote at zero. So the new feature, the big graphical new thing is to say, aha, there are two asymptotes, one at the top and one at the bottom. What happens as x approaches infinity? We're going to, in this graph, get closer and closer and closer to the number one. That the numerator and the denominator are getting closer and closer together, nearly identical, which would make it tend towards one. As we go to negative infinity, uh, we're going to have a uh, bigger denominator than a numerator, so that's going to get us closer and closer to zero. And right at uh, one, or excuse me, at zero, we're gonna have uh, one on top and two on bottom, so that's half. So that's sort of the, the key points of this graph, if you can consider infinity to be a key point. So <clears throat> the problem with this fraction, though, is that it's got the variable in two different places, and that sort of bugged mathematicians, and they said, well, we can clean this up. We can make this nicer, and if we multiply top and bottom by uh, one over two to the x, then the numerator will become one, the first term in the denominator will become one, and then that second term will become one over two to the x. And that's a compound fraction. So rather than writing it as uh, one over two to the x in the southeast corner of the fraction, they decided to call it two to the negative x. And this has algebraic advantages. You only have to plug in x once. It's technically a compound fraction, which is kind of gross, but it's easier to type into your calculator and get just one equation, typing x only once in your equation. So what we're gonna define now is we're gonna have a, a more 
expandable version of this. And again, this is all that sort of transformation of function stuff that we did back in chapter one. If we multiply our whole equation by some C, then rather than having a ceiling up there at one, we're gonna have a ceiling up there at C. And this is what happens. You know, you turn the deer loose in a field and their population shoots up over years, but quickly there's a maximum amount of grass for them to eat, so there's a maximum number of deer and that's the carrying capacity, C. Um, the rest of this equation then kind of gets a little bit tricky. As, as we wanted to have a one in the southwest corner of the fraction, that means that there's gonna be this A term in uh, the second term of the denominator, that this, this A is gonna be a little bit strange and you're gonna have to define it. It's not the initial value of the function. I kind of wish it was, but because we have that one there, We've moved things around. So what A needs to be is the carrying capacity minus the value at time zero divided by the value at time zero. So they're calling that here in this function P of T. They're saying A equals C minus P sub zero divided by P sub zero. So A is equal to the carrying capacity minus the initial population divided by the initial population. And that'll get you A in this equation and then B is the growth rate, and that's how fast uh, it's shooting up, and that's controlling the steepness of our curve. So we've started trying to hint at some calculus concepts. We've started trying to hint at some um, ideas that will be useful for you in calculus, and one of those things is concavity. And you remember, this is concave up, this is concave down, and all exponential functions are only concave up. So what makes logistics so useful is that if you have data that, yeah, it's concave up for a time, but then it switches to being concave down, that the rate of growth slows, then logistic is definitely the way to go. If you've got this flip in concavity, it's, it's very important for you to know this is not just straight exponential, this is logistic. And so that flip in concavity happens and our graphs, on the ones that we're doing here in 7-7, -7, it happens uh, right there at the halfway point. Halfway up the, the Ys is where that flip in concavity happens, where we change from growing faster and faster to growing slower and slower. So useful thing to know about reflect, uh, when this data changes uh, steepness. So let's do a problem. Let's actually do one of these. And one of the things that is obvious is, uh, and I'd, I'm not gonna do for you, is that your calculator has a logistic reg. So if you've got some data, you've got, uh, it entered in L1 and L2, you turn on a stat plot, you look at the stat plot, zoom number nine is zoom stat, you look at your data and you say, okay, this looks like it's shooting up pretty steep and then leveling off, I'm gonna do a logistic reg. If you wanna do them by hand, which is what we're about to do, then finding all that A, B, and C uh, kind of stuff can be a bit obnoxious. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have two versions of our equation here. We're gonna have a sort of standard one, and this is what the calculator will give you, and this is more robust and what you would actually use in real life. And then we're gonna have one for when we're doing it by hand. And this is a little bit more hard algebra, but it's simpler than it would be if we were doing the full equation. So watch out, Forrester doesn't expect you to do the full A, B, and C in the standard way. There's a simpler way to do it without E in it. So what we're gonna say is that we're gonna make functions f of x where there's a carrying capacity C divided by one plus A times B to the negative x, okay? So let's, let's use that simpler one here on this coyote problem. Okay, at the beginning of 2007, the coyote population in a wilderness area was estimated at 200 coyotes. By the beginning of 2009, the coyote population had increased to 250. A park ranger estimated that the carrying capacity of the wilderness area was 500 coyotes. So you should be able to draw a little sketch for this and say at the beginning, in 2007, we were at 200 coyotes. By 2009, it had gone up to 250, and we expect a maximum of 500. So that would mean that we would go 
in this sort of S-shaped kind of curve like that. All right, use the given data to determine the growth rate constant for the logistic model of this coyote population. Use the logistic model to determine and predict the year in which the coyote population will first reach 400. So what we've got up here at this height, this maximum, is our carrying capacity. So we found C right off the bat, they gave it to us, that's 500. We've got to try to find out what A is, and A is not the initial value, we wish it was, but it's gonna be the carrying capacity minus the initial value divided by the initial value. So all those zeros will cancel and we'll get five minus two is three divided by two is three halves or 1.5, okay. So there's our A and now it remains for us to find B. Well, good thing they gave us this data point over there at two comma 250, 250, because points are made out of X and Y, so we can plug that in and we can say, all right, 250 equals 500 over one plus A times B to the negative X. All right, so we've got a horrible denominator there, definitely wanna cross multiply. 250 equal, no, not equals, 250 plus uh, 250 times 1.5 times b to the negative 2 equals 500. We're getting there. We got to try to dig this b out. So we're going to subtract 250 uh, from both sides, and that will get us 250 uh, times 1.5 times b to the negative 2 equals 250. Divide both sides by 250. See why I picked these numbers? Uh, divide by 250 and you get 1.5 b to the negative 2 equals 1. And let's keep going. Ah, I should have left it as a fraction. This is going to be much easier if I say that that's 3 halves. Multiply both sides by 2 thirds and I get b to the negative 2 is 2 thirds. And what's a negative 2 exponent? That's 1 over b squared is 2 thirds. Cross multiply and you get b squared equals 3 halves. Take the square root of both sides, which it would be more convenient if I knew a decimal. So that's gonna be that b equals the square root of 3 halves, which the calculator is telling me is approximately equal to 1.2247. And I'll stop there. So uh, equation is f of x equals 500 over one plus 1.5 times 1.2247 to the negative x. There we've got our equation, and if I stick that into my uh, grapher here, they said that we needed to find out when it equals 400. So zooming in a little here, it looks like in the vicinity of nine-ish, yeah, somewhere around the ninth year, there will get to be 400 coyotes. But if I zoom out, you can see that this thing is uh, leveling off at 500, and there was that growth rate that we found of 1.22, so about 22%, 22.5% uh, is the growth rate there. And this function is shooting up for a time, getting really high really quick, but then leveling off. Okay, so summary of what we have said. We have said that there are logistic curves, that they grow really quick and then they level off at an asymptote. They have two asymptotes, one at zero, one at the carrying capacity, which we're calling C. Then they have this number A in the equation because of the way we're messing with the algebra. A is equal to the carrying capacity minus the initial population divided by the initial population. B is the growth rate. And really, if we want to model real life functions or use the calculator, we're going to get this nice equation with E in it back from the logistic reg in our calculator. Or we're going to do it by hand in this other way and solve for B uh, ourselves having to do a little bit of algebra. So we will practice this and I'll see you in class.